Until it rains, you please, Ma. And good morning. You're on your own, buddy. I don't even want to think about eggs, much less fry them. Good morning. Uh, uh, <coughs> Gesundheit. Uh. Well then, 80-60 eggs, but heavy on the strawberry jam. If you're talking about this toast, forget it. I'm planning a hectic morning of tea, toast, and bed. Uh, Are you getting a cold? Not getting. Having. Terrific. This book, something else. I knew you'd love it. That's Beverly the Wedding, isn't it? No, that was for class. I already finished that one. This is The Heart is a Lonely Hunter. It was just a blanket to me. It's by the same writer, Carson McCullers. I'd lend it to you, but it's Miss Jessup's personal copy. You really ought to read it, though. It's a great book. It's nice to hear you so excited about something you read. Yeah, it's all Miss Jessup. Your English teacher? She makes you love to read. I think she's a very important person. Maybe we could have her over for dinner sometime. I'm sure that could be arranged, but not tonight. I am heading for the old corral. Oh, before you go, could you please make me a sandwich? Today is the tuna casserole on the calf. Yeah. Buddy, now that you've discovered literature, try venturing into the realm of ham and cheese sandwiches. Uh, just think of it as part of life's rich tapestry. <laughs> Don't bother me now. If I were, buddy, I would. Oh. Hi, Nancy. I'm sorry. Come on in. No cracks about my work, please. Hey, I came over to invite you to dinner. You don't have to jump down my throat. Dinner? Really? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's very nice. Yeah, Tom and Lois Prescott are coming. I always kind of like them. How cool. What you mean is, it would be less awkward if I were there. Don't be silly. Tom and I are good friends. Got to get along better now that he's married than we ever did when we were involved. Involved? Yeah. What a way you have with words, Nancy. I wish they came that easily to me. I would have had this done weeks ago. Yes or no to dinner? Yes. What are we having? Lasagna? You don't know how to make lasagna. No, but you do. Dinner at eight? Well, you should be very pleased with yourself. Your composition, it was first rate. Really? Thanks. See you tomorrow, then. Okay. but I think I'm still contagious. Uh, it was worth it. Feeling any better? Much. I think uh, if I stay put till morning, I'll be out of the woods. But darling, I promised Beth Gilroy I'd go to the parents' meeting tonight. It's unofficial, but there's going to be a report from the busing committee. I'm just not up to it. Oh, no, not me. You can call Marsha Pfeiffer about it tomorrow. She always calls me. Oh, please, darling, Beth said to please be there. All right. But if they try to get me involved in one of those cake sales... Hold out the committee chairman. 
then you won't actually have to do any selling. Speaking of cake, I haven't done anything about dinner tonight. Well, your children did. Or at least Willie did. Uh, Nancy talked him into making lasagna for her dinner party. It's a recipe for 18, so you can have whatever you want, as long as it's lasagna. Let's play it, girl. Oh, it is, yes. Fabulous. Mm. What's your secret? Willie, he's a family <laughs> chef. <laughs> I don't believe you still haven't learned to cook, man. Believe it. Anyone for thirds? Oh, I wish you hadn't counted. Oh, well, then, why don't you just relax and I'll have some coffee in a minute. For the Guinness Book of Records, I think I'm gonna see how much more I weigh now than before. Excuse me. Oh! Willie, would you mind checking out some of these? He kind of gets uncovered during the night. Hmm. Sure. Nancy, there's something I want to talk to you about. Oh, sure. I'm all yours. Hmm. And how about some dessert? I have a surprise for you for making me lasagna. I think I've had quite enough surprises for one evening. Oh, okay. Are there any more questions on the busing report? And everyone has their fact sheet. Good. That's great. Now, uh, one last thing will be true. As usual, we are planning a cake sale. Uh, Mrs. Gilroy, Beth, I have something to say. I think you were the cake sale chairman last year, weren't you, Mrs. Ballmer? Yes, and I did a very good job, too. <laughs> I only wish that what I had to tell you about was something as simple as a cake sale. As some of you may know, my sister Ethel lives in San Francisco. Ethel has a daughter, Patricia. Patsy is 19 now, and she goes to college. Last year, there was a big scandal at her school. So what else is new? That's just what I said when Ethel tried to tell me. I'm not one who enjoys gossip. But anyway, the crux of the matter is that one of the teachers at Patsy's school... I guess the best thing is just simply to come right out and say it. She was. She is. A lesbian. I hear there's a lot of that kind of thing going on these days. Alice, what has that got to do with us? That's just what I asked Ethel, and she told me. The teacher in question moved on to another school. This school. Her name is Flora Jessup. Miss Jessup. I thought I'd faint when I found out, but it is true. She is an avowed lesbian. Now, I'm sure that you all understand why I felt that I had to share this with you. Actually, I'm not quite sure. Well, I thought that if we could all agree on the best way to go about it. The best way to go about what? Getting her to leave the school. You all think she should leave the school, don't you? Not necessarily. You're Dad Lawrence, aren't you? William, you certainly should understand. I'm sure that you don't want your daughter Buddy, isn't it? subjected to the influence of a perverted woman. Uh, hold on a minute, Mrs. Palmer. I know that I don't want my Stacy exposed to that kind of thing. Well, I'm sure I'm just as concerned about my uh, daughter's welfare as anyone. You seem to be implying Miss Jessup is guilty of a crime. Homosexuality, per se, is not a criminal offense, Mrs. Palmer. It is to me, Mr. Lawrence. Now, the only thing that I could come up with, and I'm sure you'll all agree, is that we write up a petition and take it to the school board. The school board? What for? So they can proceed with a hearing and dismiss her. Now, uh, uh, Mrs. Palmer, I'm a concerned parent, also a lawyer. What you're suggesting is legally impossible. Impossible? In this county, homosexuality is not legal grounds for dismissal. Now, if Miss Jessup were indicted on a morals charge, prosecuted and found guilty, action to dismiss could be taken up. What you have just outlined, Mr. Lawrence, sounds tedious, but not impossible. 
I knew that my sister Ethel's word would not be sufficient evidence for the school board. So I've started gathering facts. I've learned quite a bit already. Now, if you would all be good enough to give up another evening, tomorrow evening, in fact, I know that when you hear all of the information, you'll be behind me 100%. Beth, can we get this room tomorrow night? I'll arrange it. If that's what everyone wants. Okay. That's it for tonight. Same time tomorrow night, I guess. Good night. Mr. Lawrence, I do hope that you and Kate can make it tomorrow night. I understand your daughter, Buddy, is very attached to Miss Jessie. So I've heard. <laughs> Buddy's idol, as Alice Palmer was kind enough to point out to me. Tell me why you know, I feel sorry for her. At the same time, I want to strangle her. I don't know, but she's not called the Iron Butterfly for nothing. Yeah, so it seems. I tried to explain to her that legally she didn't have a leg to stand on. And? And she assured me and everyone else that she would deliver a bombshell at the next meeting that would cover that technicality. You'll hear about it soon enough. Next meeting is tomorrow night. Well, I'm glad to hear that, because the next night is Wednesday. Wednesday? Yes, Wednesday. And guess who's coming to dinner? When Carson McCullough refers to the we of me, what she's talking about is the need we all have to belong to something, something larger than ourselves. The need we have to be members of a group. Ruby, you know what the bet she means. <laughs> Back to the we of me. Really, what Miss McCullough is talking about is love. And isn't that a fine way of saying that there are many, many different kinds of love? Tell us about it, Miss Jessup. Stacy Palmer, try to hang in there. In just a few minutes, the bell will ring, and then you can go out into the hall and whisper as long as you like. Now. Who can suggest the kind of love that Miss McCullers might have in mind? <laughs> Buddy? Maybe the kind of love you have for your country, or your family, or a friend. Or maybe even a teacher. Yes, thank you. Or for a special girlfriend, maybe? Oh, say by the bell, Stacy. Okay, tomorrow the further adventures of Frankie, John, Henry, and the We of Me. Until then, get lost, kids, and have a nice evening. What are you being so gross for? Gross? That's all you know, Buddy Lawrence. It's lucky for you she's going to be thrown out of here. Thrown out? What are you talking about? I'm talking about Miss Jessup, your hero. My mother found out that she, uh, she likes girls. She likes girls? Sure she likes girls. She wouldn't be a teacher if she didn't like girls. Or so dim. I mean, she likes girls. You know, the way boys are supposed to like girls. You're nuts. You know that? You're really nuts. <laughs> Garrett. I'm sorry, I'm just curious. Couldn't you be a little more specific? Yeah. People stink. Especially Stacy Palmer. What about Stacy? She's always mouthing off. But today she got really gross. She was insulting Miss Jessa. Giggling, whispering. Giggling about what? Hmm. Stacy was saying that. Well, that Miss Jessup, Miss Jessup is gay. And that her mother is going to get Miss Jessup kicked out of school.
that's what you were trying to tell me this morning, huh? Yes. Your father said that Mrs. Palmer brought it up at the meeting last night. Well, what's going to happen now? There'll be another meeting tonight. Good. I'm going to it. I'm going to tell Mrs. Palmer that she's bananas. Oh, no, you're not. Your father and I are going to be there. You have to trust us to do the best we can. Okay. But you give Mrs. Palmer hell for me. You watch your language, miss. You hear me? I'm happy to report that I have found out enough about Flora Jessup's private life not to be concerned about Mr. Lawrence's legal admonition. Uh, well, this admonition is not legal, it's personal. People's private lives are just that private. I don't feel we have the right to invade that privacy. I couldn't agree with you more strongly. The only problem is, in this particular instance, the person's private life is dangerous to the safety of our children. Now, you can see that that is quite another matter, can't you? Now, before anybody says anything else, I think you should all know why Flora Jessup left her last teaching position. You see, she seduced a student. I spoke to the dean of the school. Charges were brought against her. But she packed up and left town before they could do anything. Now, I think that even you, Mr. Lawrence, can see that we have grounds for dismissal on Morrow's charges. No, I uh, don't think so, Mrs. Palmer. Such charges would have to be brought concerning a current incident. Listen, I think we should table the matter of Miss Jessup until someone not too uh, emotionally involved, too prejudiced, can hear Miss Jessup's side. Now, uh, hold on, Doug. Now, I agree with you about a person having certain rights. But boy, if that person doesn't have the moral judgment to stay away from innocent kids. Our children are at a very impressionable age, and personally, I want to be very careful about what and who mine are exposed to. Of course. Under other circumstances, I would not dream of even discussing something like this. But I think that you can all see that it is absolutely vital that Flora Jessup be made to leave this school. Uh, a formal motion has to be made, I think. Uh, just a minute. Now, if Mr. Lawrence is correct and we can expect no legal help, then I think we should organize a campaign. Flora Jessup can be made to resign. If enough about her private life is made public, she'll have to leave. Before all this happens, shouldn't Miss Jessup have a chance to speak in her own behalf? <laughs> That's entirely up to her. I'm certainly ready to listen. I'm sure everyone is. I'm with Alice Palmer. Looks to me like we better do something. Who else can I count on? Hmm? Thank you. Now, all those on the other side. to vote one way or the other. You have to be for or against. No, I can't. Not yet. Mom, is that you? Oh, buddy, what are you doing up? I thought I should stay awake, but I guess I crashed. Did you tell Mrs. Palmer to go to... I mean, did you tell Mrs. Palmer off? Buddy, the whole thing is more complicated than I expected. There's a possibility that it's true. Well, Miss Jessup is entitled to believe what she wants to. You did stick up for her, though, didn't you? No, I didn't. I need time to think. Mom, while you're thinking, they're gonna ruin her! Buddy, something was brought up, and it bothers me. There's talk about Miss Jessup and a student. No! But Buddy, listen to me. No, it's not true. It couldn't be. You let crazy Mrs. Palmer get to you. I thought you were smarter than that. Oh, Buddy! Now, how come your mother didn't stick up for your pal last night? I don't know what you're talking about. I guess she's worried about your relationship with a certain party. I dare you to keep talking. Some of us have always wondered about you, buddy. 
I certainly have. I meant to ask, how come I want to try out for the boys' basketball team? For your information, there is a law about discrimination in sports. I bet I know who taught you that. Hey, buddy, when Miss Jessup leaves, is she going to take you with her the way she did the girl in her other school? What are you talking about? For your information, Buddy Lawrence, people go by what they see. And we've all seen you mooning around over Miss Jessup. Birds of a feather flock together. Right. was all in my imagination, too. Yep, okay. Chicken is superb. Thank you, darling. Well, you know, I think it's the uh, sesame seeds. Mm -hmm. Please. I'm sorry. I think if I hear one more word about this chicken, I'll scream. Oh, good. <laughs> I'd run out of compliments. <laughs> Look, when I got here this evening, and you said that Buddy wasn't feeling very well, that isn't it, is it? I suspect that she's heard things and she's upset. I'm right, aren't I? I'm sorry, yes, you're right. That's the worst part of all of this, you know? The effect that it can have on the children. I hate it. The effect on us hasn't been too wonderful, either. No, I suppose not. We'd better talk. And I guess I'd better be the one to start. It's true, I am homosexual. Well, we know that your private life is none of our business. Well, it wouldn't be, Mr. Lawrence, if I were just a cashier at your neighborhood grocery store, but I'm not. I'm a teacher. And I spend a great deal of time with your children, your adolescent children. I know that I'm in a position to have a long-lasting effect on their lives. Well, listen, before any more is said, I'm a lawyer. If you need counsel, I mean, once this committee gets started... Committee? What committee? Mrs. Palmer. Mrs. Palmer? Sorry, I assumed you knew. No. I'd heard that the rumors were starting to fly, but... I had no idea that they'd organized a committee. Already. She learned that at your previous school, you were charged with seducing a student. Do you believe that? I don't want to. But it worries me. It's not something that can be dismissed. Hmm. I was a teaching assistant at a small college. Someone there wanted to have me fired to ensure his appointment. As only one of us was to be kept on on a permanent basis. This person spent every waking minute trying to find something that would discredit me. Well, it was easy. He found what he was looking for. Anne-Marie. A student? Yes, Mr. Lawrence, a student. She and I met, and we became lovers. I'm sorry. Uh, I thought I heard something. You thought Buddy might be listening? Yes, but there's no one there. Oh, uh, I would hate for her to hear all of this. It's so hard at her age to sort out one's feelings. Are you saying Mrs. Palmer's allegations are true? Anne-Marie was a student, but not my student. And not a child. As she was 22 years old. I wasn't much older than that myself. She and I hadn't even met at school. I respect myself, Mrs. Lawrence. Uh, Mr. Lawrence. But what's more important to you both, I'm sure, is that I respect children. 
I teach because I love to. And I want my students to love what I bring to them as a teacher. Until recently, homosexual men and women have had two constant companions. Fear and shame. At that time, I lived with both. And so I ran away. I wasn't up to more. But now I am. And this time, I'm not going to run. I abstained last night when the committee vote was taken. And for the reasons you mentioned. Worries about Buddy. Your influence over her. It made me unable to take a position. But now that I've met you and heard you, I do feel able to. I want you to know that you have my support. And mine. <sighs> Thank you. I'm still very scared, but Mrs. Palmer is really in for a fight. If you don't mind, though, I would like to stop and see Buddy say goodnight. I'm very concerned about her. May I? Certainly. I'll show you the way. Right upstairs. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say that I was sorry you couldn't make it to dinner tonight. We missed you. that you've heard the rumors. Buddy. apply in this situation, Nancy, and you know it. Boy, I'm gonna let you bury yourself this time because you really deserve it. I deserve it? Mm -hmm. Okay. One, I saw you cuddling with a man in your kitchen while his wife was in the same house with you. Keep digging. It's not deep enough. Two, I saw the two of you come out of a shop yesterday together. Oh, and he kissed me right in the middle of the street. Oh, great, Scott. Three, that was Tom, who just left here at 8 a.m. I didn't imagine that, Nancy. Oh, if you weren't my brother, I think I'd stop talking to you right now. But since you are, and I'm obviously stuck with you, I think I'll tell you a few things. But first, I want you to pick out the kind of flowers you want when I'm through. Oh, let's just forget it. Not a chance, OK? Oh, no. Tom told me at dinner that he wanted to get a very special birthday present for Lois. Dose. I'm Lois's size, so I told him I'd be his model. Trace. Tom and I went shopping for the gift together. I picked it up and brought it home, and Tom came and got it this morning. I think lilies would be nice. Go with my shroud. Rest in peace. Home. 
Well, I might ask you the same question. Why aren't you in school? Why aren't you? My class was canceled. Buddy? I didn't go to school. I can see that. Where were you all morning? Walking around. I'm B. Can I go upstairs? Wait a minute. I think I know what this is about. What happened when Miss Jessup went up to see you last night? Nothing. Buddy, when Miss Jessup left us, she was feeling fine. When she came downstairs, she seemed disturbed and defeated. I want you to tell me what happened. Just because I wanted to try out for the basketball team, and just because I talked to Miss Jessup a lot after school, doesn't mean that... They're, they're saying that... They're saying that I'm like her. Do you think that's true? No, that's just dumb. No, I don't think it's true. In fact, I know it's not true. Well, Miss Jessup thinks it's true. Buddy. Last night, when she came up to my room, she... Well, she put her arms around me. If that had happened last week, how would you have felt about it? Well, last week was different. I didn't know about her then. Or the student from her class. Buddy, I don't think you should assume that Miss Jessup's private life has any bearing on her relationship with you. And what you heard has to do with her private life, not with her work. You must be quite clear in your mind that you're not confusing the two. I don't see the difference. Darling, I can't and I don't want to defend Miss Jessup's way of life. But maybe it'll make it easier for you to know that the girl you heard about was not her student. That she was someone old enough to know what she wanted from life. About Miss Jessup's age, in fact. And that she chose to be with Miss Jessup as Miss Jessup chose to be with her. I'm just a little mixed up about the whole thing. Do you remember the idea of the we of me? I believe Miss Jessup thinks of you as part of the we of her. Someone she can love to teach, love to see learn. And that what she hopes for in exchange is that you should love to be taught, grow to love learning. I think you can trust her, buddy. And I know you can trust yourself. I just need a little more time to think. Doesn't everybody? Uh. Hello? Yes, Alice. Oh, what a relief. I wanted to share it with you first. We won. We've won what? Flora Jessup resigned this afternoon. Kate, you should be ashamed of yourself. I was shocked when you didn't vote. I couldn't believe it. You're right, Alice. I am ashamed for not insisting that Miss Jessup have a chance to respond to you. For heaven's sakes, Kate, what could she possibly say? Something, I'm sure. And I thought she was going to. Frankly, Alice, I was rather looking forward to her bringing suit against you. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you. But I'm afraid that there's not going to be any lawsuits from that quarter. Maybe not. But I'll tell you this. I don't think she should leave the school. She's a wonderful teacher. The children need her, and I'm going to see what I can do to keep her from leaving. Really, Kate, the children can learn from anyone. And unfortunately do. Uh, you'll have to excuse me, Alice. I want to use my phone. I want to call some of the parents and see what we can do to have Miss Jessup reconsider. Battle stations. This is Lawrence. Miss 
Jessup. You weren't in class today, buddy. Why not? I had a lot of things in my mind I needed to think. I'm sorry. No, it's perfectly all right. You needn't apologize. I understand. Miss Jessup, I heard you were quitting. Yes. Please don't do that. Well, I think it's best I do. It's not going to do any good running away. Buddy, I'm not running away. It's just that... I have decided not to teach. Not teach? If I can't be a good teacher, then I don't want to be one at all. And I can't be a good teacher if my students are frightened or repelled by what I am. Then nothing I have to teach to them will mean anything. You're talking about me, aren't you? Yes. And others like you, who start out loving and wanting to learn, and then... I'm sorry about what happened last night. Really, I am. I just got scared and confused. Buddy. I don't want to talk about that part right now. There are other things. I've started to learn a whole bunch of new stuff since you've been my teacher. I mean, I've never even picked up a book before you. I think I've started to love learning. And I'm not anywhere near finished yet, so you can't be anywhere near finished teaching yet. And even if you think you are, I need you. And I'm not the only one. There's a lot of me's. And we love you, Miss Jessup. Buddy, I want you to do me a favor. Tell your mother and your father in particular that I accept their offer to help. And I'm going to need all the help I can get. And don't worry, buddy. We'll get to the rest of the things that you want to study and that I want to teach. If you'll sit down, I'll give you tomorrow's assignment. Yes, ma'am. I'll expect you to turn in the composition on Member of the Wedding. And uh, since the next book we're going to cover is The Red Badge of Courage, please read chapters 1 through 6. Oh, and also read the biographical information of Stephen. offering for Nancy. Oh. A year's supply, huh? Well, I only know how to make 50. If I try to cut down, the recipe doesn't work. Oh. Well, since you're here and since I'm here, could you listen to something, please? Oh, not now, buddy, please. Baking is a very creative process. Well, so is my English homework. I need to try it out on someone. What, how I spent my summer vacation by Letitia Lawrence? Willie, no. Just listen. I know what Frankie means in the member of the wedding when she says she's tired of being an I person and wants to belong to a we. When I think of the we of me, I think of my family. My brother and me eating peanut butter sandwiches in the treehouse. My father and his dumb card tricks. 
My mother practicing the same old Chopin waltz over and over until you think it'll drive you crazy. But then I also think about the time I got lost on a field trip. I felt scared and alone. And then I heard that dumb Chopin waltz in my head. Mistakes and all. And I knew I belonged somewhere. And that I wasn't alone. I knew I'd be all right. When I'm an I person, I feel alone and afraid. I get mad at other people. And I'm afraid of what they'll think of me. But when I'm a part of a we, the we gets bigger and bigger until it's big enough to include the whole world. Not good, huh? Do you have any wrapping paper and ribbon in your room? Gift wrapped cream puffs? Nancy's gonna think you're nuts. Well, they're not for Nancy. They're for Miss Jessup. For getting you to want to write that. Just do me one favor, okay? Don't improve, because I don't think I can stand the competition. Then you think it's good, huh? I think anybody who's part of the we of you is very lucky. This is me.